drum roll about the subject of diversity in the classroom. Handling the challenges of diversity in the classroom. I'm Eunice Lafayette, owner of the Fate Gallery Vision Center. But my first title is teacher. I spent approximately three decades in the classroom teaching from kindergarten to being a professor in a college. So I've seen it all. So when I address the subject of diversity in the classroom, I'm coming with a wealth of experience at different levels. Let me give credit to the music. It's the music of Jonathan W. Whitney, Jr., who is a drummer in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, a drummer extraordinaire. That album, which is composed of 12 tracks, is a combination of my folk art, five images of my folk art, were used as inspiration to create five tracks on that 12 track album. If you want to get the album, you can get it at www.jwwmusic.com. Having given credit, yes, my subject today is classroom diversity and that teacher diversity matters. I have great empathy, empathy, empathy. Oh yes, let's get that word right. Great empathy for current day teachers. I lift my hat to them because the challenges they face were far, are far greater than what I faced when I taught over those three decades. So my headline is Teacher Diversity Matter and Diversity in the, in the Classroom. I have a lot of props. Yeah, because when I was trained as a teacher at the Michael Teachers College in Kingston, Jamaica, our lecturers, we can call them professors, or lecturers would have these sessions with us before we went out on teaching practice. It was different from, well, no, it's the same as practicum, but that's the name they gave it. And we were issued a warning by our lecturers, don't let me come out on the field and see you chalk and talk. That means when you go in front of a class to teach, you should have some form of visual aid to help the children connect and understand the lesson you're teaching. That's what inspired me to be the great artist I am today, because instead of cutting and pasting from magazines, I drew my own pictures. Well, before I proceed, since we're talking about classroom diversity and I'm gonna bring up some real experiences, I want to give you a greeting in four languages. Why is it important? Language is essential to the classroom, to learning and understanding the classroom. And teachers who don't have a knowledge of various languages can face serious challenges. And I'm going to give an example. So I'm greeting you as a teacher but because I want to explain diversity, I'm going to greet you in my native language and our standard English and two other languages because all of that is in the classroom. If you're a teacher in the classroom and you only know the English language and you're not able to understand other languages, it's a greater challenge for you. Okay. So the language I'm going to use, it, use first to greet you is my native Jamaica Patois, P-A-T-O-I-S. And that language was developed on the plantation. It was a combination of the African tribal languages 
and the European language, so wherever the Europeans went, whether it was the British, French, Spanish, etc., they wanted their language to dominate. So I'm from the island of Jamaica, and we were ruled by the British. You know, oh, wow. And they, they, in our classroom, they were strict on that you had to speak or use the Queen's English in your writing. Every grammar, every tense, everything had to be perfect. Yeah. I don't regret that kind of education, though. So... To explain diversity in the classroom and help you to cope with the challenges of diversity, especially in language, because you're going to face children. Yes, there may be some Jamaican children in your classroom. There may be children of all different ethnic groups. How are you going to deal with them if you're going to be in a straight jacket and, and consider English as the only language? Okay. So I'm with my, the language I'm going to greet you in is Patois. How to do? How to do out there, everybody? How to do this afternoon? How to do, Miss Mary, Miss Jane, Miss Joe? How to do out there? Me doing well. Uno, in that language, is a plural of you. And the slaves had to respond promptly to the master's directives, otherwise they would be whipped. So they eked out the language in which they merge the African tribal languages and the English language, as in the case of Jamaica, and they shorten the long. Okay, so where are you going? I say, how are you go? To whom does this belong? Ah, uh, for this. <laughs> yeah, so that's the pattern. And that's the first, like in the case of Jamaica, that's the first language children, before they go to school, that's their language. And then they go to school, they have to learn, convert and learn the English language. We are a diverse nation in our languages. This afternoon. Buenas tardes. Ya hablo un poco de español. My last name is French, La Fête, but I am not French. But I'm greeting French. Bonjour or two. That is, how are you all doing? Well, let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing out there? Great. So we clear that bar to realize that teachers in the classroom are going to face a challenge with students who speak different languages, different versions of language, and they, they must adjust. And they should take time out to learn and to understand the children they're teaching. There was an incident in a New York classroom. I'm going to say it's a Monday morning, because I don't know, but somehow, from my experience, Monday morning is usually the drama morning. So, a Jamaican boy, Jamaican student in a New York classroom in Brooklyn, he was writing and he wanted to erase. He wrote with a pencil, he wanted to erase something. So he said to the boy next to him, lend me your rubbers. Woo! What did he say? Lend me your rubbers. Now, in Jamaica, that boy grew up learning that the pencil, this part of the pencil you use to erase, is, called, is made from rubber. Yes, the rubber comes from the, 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 the sap of a tree. So when the boy said to, when the Jamaican boy said to his American classmate, lend me your rubbers, that's what he was talking about. But it was interpreted differently, and they reported him to the principal. He was pulled to the principal's office. Thanks to a Jamaican teacher who was there, she saved the day. She inter they were going to suspend the child. They were about to suspend the child for using the word rubbers to describe the, this part of the pencil you used to erase. 
So whereas the American children say eraser, the children in Jamaica know this as rubber. Yes, that's what they call it. But they interpret it in a, in a very vulgar way. When the boys said, lend me your rubbers, they interpreted it in that vulgar way. And nearly had the boy suspended, hadn't it been for that Jamaican teacher to rescue, to come to the rescue of that boy. This is, these are facts. These are not made up. Okay. So yes, teachers are going to face students of different background. And you can't just put them in a vacuum. And, and go on teaching your lesson. It doesn't work that way. You need to take time out to learn and to understand the diversity in the classroom. I know teachers go through some diversity training, but these uh, usually these seminars don't always address everything. There are going to be incidents that were not addressed in that seminar, like the one I just gave you. And you, you have to learn to deal with it. Okay, I'm going to show you a book. I mean, I'm talking about my own experience of diversity in the classroom when I moved, when I immigrated from Jamaica to the United States. So first, let me show you a book. Is everybody familiar with this? This is the National Geographic magazine. I used to love it, to read it. Well, I still do, but I don't read as much as... It, it captures a lot of information all over the world. The National Geographic magazine. So, how is that related to diversity in the classroom? Sure does. On a Monday morning. It's Monday morning again. In my fourth grade classroom, in the city of Wilmington, I was teaching math. I had a late night making my visual aids because I wanted everything to be, you know, on point and sure to grasp my teaching of the formulas, etc. So in the middle of my math class, there was an uproar in the back of the classroom. This boy was laughing his head off. I said, time out. I said, come, I, we want to share that joke. Because it, since you're disrupting the class, let's share your joke. So he came to the front of the classroom with his National Geographic magazine. It was open to a page like this. Yes. Let me get it out of here so we can see it. A page like this. With... An African man, scantily dressed, just with a loin cloth. And he was, the boy was still laughing. So he brought the book to the front of the class, poked it in my face and said, Miss, is this how all the people in Jamaica look? Hmm. That was a teachable moment. I immediately erase the word math from the chalkboard and I wrote diversity. I said, no, the people in Jamaica don't look like the man in the book. They look like me. And tomorrow I will bring you some photographs of my family and other people in Jamaica so you can see what they look like, which I did. So I brought photographs, and we sit and we talked about it. I altered my curriculum without, I didn't go to no principal, I didn't ask, no permission. I inserted diversity in my weekly schedule, in my weekly um, lesson plans. Because now I realize the one class alone could not have addressed it. So every week we had a session on diversity. Here's another work of art that came out of my classroom. So here is a piece that I used to correct that misinformation of that child. Oh, 
Okay. So I said to the child, this is what the peep in Jamaica looked like. So this is how I came up with this image right here. This is the demography of Jamaica. We are a plantation society and yes, we have people of all races in Jamaica. As the boy thought that the, the man in the book was what the Jamaican people looked like. So I did this painting and it's titled Diversity and it's from Jamaica's motto, Out of Many, One People. Diversity is important. Now here's another work of art that came out of my classroom experience. This time I was a student. I was a student in the master's degree human services program at Springfield College here in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. And I recall one Saturday morning, it's a weekend program, my professor came in in our strategic planning class and he said, you people who are studying human services, you better realize that America is no longer a melting pot. It is a salad bowl of cultures. That was the first time I was hearing that term definition of our culture. He said, America is no longer a great melting pot. It is a salad bowl of cultures. And yes, it is. We have evolved from the concept of the melting pot where everybody is assumed to be the same, like a great stew, to the more realistic concept of a salad bowl of cultures where we are in we are individuals represented working together living together however we bring our own cultures to this like me i came here with my culture my language and i'm still asked how long have you been here when i tell them oh you still have that accent and they think the accent is, you know, something funny. You still have that accent. Well, look, you couldn't pay me to give up my accent. I love my accent. That's what makes me who I am. Back to the classroom. So we need an understanding of diversity in the classroom. Teachers need to understand, respect, and value the differences in the classroom and relate to them and don't put everyone in a basket as if we are all the same. No, we are not. Take time out to learn the child's background. So it's a Jamaican child in your classroom and the child is speaking Patois. And you don't understand it. Take a little time. Take a little recess time and learn. Go Well, actually go research it because um, there's a vocabulary book out there that tells you what the different Patwa words, how they're interpreted in English. Take a little time and do some research. And if you don't know the Spanish, go learn it too. Yes, it is important. Otherwise, we're not going to deliver a good education in the classroom. And this is the final one from my classroom experience, this one. It's titled, Let's Unite. And I guess it came out of that fourth grade classroom where children were bickering with one another, calling, calling one another racial slurs. And I had to nip it in the bud, I had to time out. But I gave them an affirmation which, which said, if we hold hands, we cannot fight. Because yes, those racial slurs did cause fight in the classroom. 
And after a while, yes, I got them to understand and respect one another. And um, the affirmation was, if we hold hands, we cannot fight. How logical is that? So our children are there for us to help. Our children come to us with talents, an abundance of it. We cannot underestimate the talents they bring to the classroom. All it requires a little extra time to learn and understand. This is another of my painting related to education. And this one is titled, Leave No Child Behind. Because every child can be a star if given the right of the opportunities and the right tools to succeed. So we need to provide, do not underestimate the ability of any child. Treat each child with respect and understanding. Provide the opportunities. Address the diversities, the inabilities, if there are physical inabilities. Address them and make this world a better place for children. It is just the right thing to do. Okay, all of this being said, this week is recognized as National Arts in Education Week. And to recognize Arts in Education Week, I put a post out there making an offer. I am offering to educational institutions. I put a post out there this morning offering to educational institutions a copy of my art, a copy of this, a lithograph. It's called a lithograph. They are signed and they are numbered. So you will get an unframed one if you call me. I'm giving to 10 different institutions. 10 different institutions can get a free copy of this masterwork here. The melting pot versus a salad bowl. If you call me at area code 302 Six five six six seven eight six. You can make arrangement to come to Lafayette Gallery to pick up your copy of this limited edition print. And the address here is two two seven North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. It is pretty close to the train station here in our city. I just want to go take a little walk outside. This is North Market Street here. And the train station is just two blocks away from my gallery. So you can take right on the train and, and come to the city. Also, I should be announcing that I have parking permits that will give you three hours free at the parking station let me announce that and when you those of you who are coming to my um, event you can get your parking voucher for three hours parking thanks to downtown vision for this Three hours parking, you park at the yes, you park at the parking authority place down there's also parking at Deltec, so I have five parking vouchers here at five people who want to come to Lafayette Gallery and if you want a three hour in the city without any hassle at the parking 
slot, you I will provide you with a voucher, parking voucher, so you can park. There's also a parking at lot four at Dell Tech, which is pretty close to the gallery. So take advantage of these. If you're interested, call me at 302-656-6786 to get your parking voucher. On the 30th of September, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., will be the Grand 8th Anniversary Celebration. I have been promoting it. You might have seen this poster. You'll see it again. I would love to see this gallery filled with people. Help me celebrate the 8th anniversary of Lafayette Gallery Vision Center. The person who is going to give the opening remarks is a business person, Leonard Young Jr., CEO of DelawareBlack.com. My musician, live music will be provided by Steel Pan, Steel Pan Player Extraordinaire, that is Atiba Fields. There will be refreshment, and thanks to ShopRite, will be providing me, as usual, with food for my event. Yes, I'm going to have a Jamaican cuisine as well. And, you know, wine and cake, all of that. But RSVP is required. I extended the date. At first, it was supposed to be the 15th. I am extending the RSVP date until the 23rd. It is a free event. It, however, I cater. I need to know my numbers. So don't assume that you can just show up. I want you to call to RSVP or to email me. So you can call 302-656-6786 or email me at my email address, which is on the flyer that I posted on my website. I am looking forward to the support. It is important that we support our businesses. A lot is going on in the city. A lot is going on in the city. It takes a village to grow a business. This Saturday will be big at Herman Holloway Parkway, 7th and Lombard Streets in Wilmington, Delaware. It's going to be a big affair. It's called Tourism Affair. It is Tourism and Taste of Africa. So we will have in our city, in that park, Ambassadors from Africa, ambassadors from the Caribbean. We're going to have band and music. You know what it takes to have those events. And we're hoping the rain will cooperate, or the weather, rather. So put that on your calendar. It's a lot to do around the city, a whole lot to do. That is Saturday the 16th. That's when we are having that. And in celebration of the... Eighth anniversary, I am giving a free class. One parent called this morning. I was so delighted. I've been putting it out there. I need to, uh, uh, the goal of this is to teach children business skills. I started as a child aspiring to be a businesswoman, and I lived my dream. So I want to pass on the talent to children. So I'm offering a free art class. Free to the parents. Somebody has to pay for it. I apply for some funding. So your child can come to this class to learn about entrepreneurial skills. How they too can grow up to be a business person. It's from ages 8 to 16. The class is going to be on the 23rd of September, which is a Saturday from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So I am looking forward to welcoming 10 children. It's only 10 slots. So if you are hearing this video or if you see it on, the, on my post, I encourage you to register. First come, first serve. You know how they say that. 
Okay, let me do some commercial now. The Big Big Eight. The theme is New Beginning. And with that new beginning, I am moving old stuff. Not old stuff. Let's put it a bit away. I am moving my older inventory. By moving, I am moving them to your walls. I am inviting you to acquire, to acquire my inventory, which spans quite a few years, but more so the last eight years. I Yesterday, I did a video on miniatures, how you could collect, how you could collect miniatures and adorn your wall. Look at this box of goodies. They're framed and ready to be hung. You can get them at very, very affordable prices. Other things you can get when you come to this gallery, mugs. With my artwork, these are not your ordinary mugs. T-shirts, sweatshirts. The sweatshirts now are going at a discount because it's off season. Tote bags, a range of products. So take advantage, framed limited edition, 25% off. Original paintings, we are giving 25% off originals too. So we invite you to take advantage and to start build your collection or to expand your collection. Then when you come to the gallery, you're in for another treat. One of a kind. Nowhere else in the whole wide world will you find these treasures. These are aesthetic resin sculpture and jewelry. And I always like to promote it by showing what I'm wearing. I'm decked out. That's my pendant, my bracelet. So we have pendants and bracelets. We have the sets here nicely boxed up. Those are the pendant single ones. Then we have a lot of bracelets. We have some sculptures never seen before. They are multi-purpose. You can use them as vases or candle holders, etc. So there is something for everyone here. Big, big, big. Yesterday, I shipped a painting. One of my original paintings purchased was shipped yesterday. And it is the painting. Let me show you the painting that I'm referring to. This painting on the back of this book. And inside of the book, we wrote a story. One Heart, One Love. The original painting sold yesterday. And there are no limited edition of this painting, this original. Because notice, I'm going to show you a contrast now. Because this one was done in 2002. And it represented the colors red and yellow, black and white. Well, in 2020, a carver. James McGlone, Carver Extraordinaire, took that same painting with my permission and created a 3D with it. 3D. So it's a different, this is totally different. That one I showed you is red, yellow, black, and white. This one captures brown. So this is all inclusive, red and yellow, black, and white, and brown. So these are the, the original painting, as I said, they are no limited edition and the original painting sold. But you can get these and they are t-shirts and mugs and tote bags. Let me show you over here. So over here, if I go outside and see better, there we go. Same image I showed you. That's a t-shirt and a tote bag. And look at this, all inclusive, three in one. You can get three of my works of art in one, all in one frame. There are t-shirts here from my painting 
United by Reggae Music. So come on, go online too. If you're unable to come to the gallery right now, go online at www.lafaitegallery.com to make your purchases. And then for the mugs, the t-shirts, etc., you go to a website called fineartamerica.com and I provided you a link. So thank you for watching.